So in this video, we are going to start adding some tags to our towers. So they will be able to target our monsters as they walk through the level. And then later we will start attacking the monsters. But in this video, we will focus on uh, taking the monsters on target by using the range we just created in the last, um, in the last video. Right now we have the range um, script is, or the tower script is sitting on the towers uh, ranged object here. And we need to do something to this script here to be able to um, target the monsters. So first of all, we'll need to add a um, on trigger enter function. So let me public void on trigger enter 2D because it's a 2D game. And then we will have to say collider 2D other. Okay, so this is for whenever the monsters are entering um, entering the blue area here, we do like this, and we select this, the blue area here, and the script is sitting on this range here, which is the, this one. So when a monster comes walking here into this area, we will check well does that monster have a monster target on it, uh, tag on it. If it does well, then we need to set that monster as a target so we can attack it. And this function here is triggered when that monster enters that ring. And you can access the monster or whatever enters that ring with through this one called other. So if other tag equals monster, then we need to do something. So first of all, we need to have a private monster called target. This is the target of this uh, tower so that it knows what it needs to attack. Because later we need to uh, shoot and um, an arrow, not an arrow, a projectile towards the monster here. So if other tag is monster, then say target target equals other dot get component monster. There we go. So now we are actually targeting this monster here, and we can just make a test. Let's go to the update here and say um, if. Oh, actually, let's just say like this, debug, lock, target. So this will write out to the console whatever our target is. In the beginning, it's going to be null. The second that a monster enters the blue ring, we will have a target and it will write the name of that monster. So let's just delete the poison tower from the scene if you also did that. And then we have to go to our prefabs and select monster. Select all your monsters and we have to add a tag to them. So add tag, click the plus and write monster and save. And okay, now we have to select them all. Go to prefabs and monsters and select them all. And then go to tag and select monster. And it's very important that you spell this exactly the same way as you did in the script. So if you write monster with capital M here, make sure that you also wrote monster with capital N, M in here. If you don't do that, then it's two different things it's checking for, and then you might not get it, or you not might, but you will not get it on target. So if we play the game, and I place a storm tower close to the portal here, so I'm sure that the monster will walk through it somehow. You can see now it's bamming null here. You can see it gets higher and higher. You can select here, then I play the game. Start a wave, it's still null, and then a monster enters, and then you can see now it's spamming that it has the blue monster on target. But you can see the monster has left the area, the range of the tower. But the tower still has the monster on target here because you can see it keeps spamming um, the name of the monster here. So we also need to add some functionality so that the monster is always, or the, so the tower can detarget the monster when it leaves the range. So public void on trigger exit. 2D. And this function is called whenever the monster exits the blue ring. So collider 2D other and let's say if target is not null. I'm not even sure if we want to make that check because it doesn't matter if we said let's just let's just do it like this. If other dot tag equals monster, then we say target equals null. Okay. So if we save that and jump back to the game, play it one more time and then place a, 
uh, tower here. And it's null, it doesn't have a target, we spawn a monster. And it gets a target, it has the blue monster here in target. Let's see, it should start spamming null again. And now it exits uh, the area here, so we can't attack it, we are out of range, so we start spamming null. Okay, I'm going to show you a problem here. So if I clear this, and I play the game as start a wave, um, like so, and then one monster spawns, and it has the green monster on target all the time here, and now it has the blue monster on target, right? So now you can see it switched the target from green to blue, so that's not what we want. We would like it to keep the target until the target exits the area here, and when the first target has exited the area, then it can check for other monsters in here and attack them. If you saw what happened, right, we can try again. You can see it starts, it gets the rest red monster on target here, and then blue monster enters, and that's on target, even though the monster, the red monster is still there. So if it switches target like this, then it might not kill any of, uh, of them, because the red monster is maybe low, but then the blue monster enters the, the search area, and it starts attacking the blue monster instead of finishing off the red monster before it leaves the area. And in that way, you might just get a lot of monsters with low health, but we will never kill any of them. So we need to set up some functionality so that we keep the same target until the target has exited um, the area. So to fix that, we can actually make um, a queuing system by using a queue. Um, actually a collection called a queue and a queue is basically the same as a queue in in the supermarket right like you have to go to the cashier to play, pay and you just get in line and the first one that gets in line is the first one to get um, checked out and, and the first one that gets to pay for their groceries and everything right so we make a queue and every time a monster enters the blue circle or the range uh, the monster will be added to the towers queue so the tower has a queue of all monsters inside the blue range and at some point a monster exits the blue range of the range and the monster just takes the next mon uh, the monster sorry the the tower uh, targets the next monster in the queue right and then when that monster exits the queue well then the tower takes a target on the next monster in the queue and so on so we make a queue of potential targets for every single tower so to do that we make a private queue and it contains monsters called monsters equals new queue. Okay, so if you can't write queue here, if it doesn't get blue, then it's because you need to implement the namespace system that collections that generic, because this is a generic collection, right? You see, if I remove this uh, like so, you'll see that this one gets an error because it doesn't exist. So remember to add this up here if you haven't done it already. Okay, so now we have a queue. How do we need to handle this? Well, every time a monster enters, um, what's it called, the, the field, the area that the, uh, the tower can see, you will have to add the monster to this queue. So instead of saying target equals this, well, then we have to say monsters that in queue, and in queue, the in queue function is used to add a new monster to a queue. Okay, in queue, um, other, that get component monster like so oh, that was one too many so now the monsters will be added to this queue here and I, I can try to show you if I put a breakpoint here this will stop the code when it's triggered uh, and I attach this to unity you don't need to do the steps that I'm doing right now it's just to show you that this works you'll see that we play the game We click next wave. Oops, sorry, <laughs> forgot to place a tower. Of course, let's see here. There we go. Let's set a tower. Play a wave here, and then it will break in a second. There we go. So I just hit the monster, or oh, the monster just entered. And then if we open up monsters, you'll see that on position zero, there's a blue monster now, right? It has one element in it, and that's position zero. That's the first one, and there's a blue monster in it. If I click continue play the game and everything and it's it's in that queue so if I run through this um, and play the game again then it will keep adding monsters to it now it never detargets this one right now it never removes from the queue it needs to be removed from the queue of course but let's try again if we play the game I have the breakpoint in there there bam it breaks 
and now you'll see the queue now contains two monsters, a blue monster from before, which should be removed, but we will remove that soon, and the new purple monster. So I hope you get the idea right, we keep adding monsters to the queue when we don't have a target or it's out of range, we just check our queue to check, hey, do we have other potential targets? If so, we just take the first monster in that queue and start attacking it. In that way, we will always attack the monster that entered the range first, which is the closest monster to attack. Or not the closest maybe, but the next um, potential target, so to say. Okay. So what else do we need to do? Well, the exit down here is totally fine, but we need to add something so that we can actually use this queue for something. So basically, I would like to make an attack fun function. So we're not going to do anything for shooting in the attack function right now. Um, but later we are going to add functionality to the attack function so that we can actually start attacking our monsters. But the attack function is also a very good place for us to actually find our targets um, and, and figure out which targets to attack, right? So in here, in the attack function, we can say if, and what should we say if to? So if our, let's say, if our target is null, and our target will be null whenever we, um, our monster doesn't exist, it haven't entered yet, or if the um, queue here, or if the monster has exited the blue area, right? So if the target is null, so when we jump into this if statement, we either don't have a target at the moment because no monsters has come close to the tower, or the monster we had on target exited the range and it's out of range, we can't attack it anymore. Because in this way, we will not be able to attack the monster in the other end of the level. That wouldn't make sense, right? So if the target is null and monsters dot count is larger than zero. So if the target is null, if we don't have a target and we have other potential targets because if the monsters list or the monsters queue has something in it, the count will be larger than zero. Let's say there's one monster there, then the count will be one, which means that there is an other potential target to attack. So we say target equals monsters dot DQ. So what does it do? Well, this one takes the first monster in the queue and removes it from the queue. It doesn't copy it, it actually removes it from the queue and puts it into target. So now we have the monster uh, that is on top of the queue, or first in the queue, on target. And at this point, the queue will be empty, so we will not try to attack another monster when this monster has passed through. For example, let's say we have three monsters in the queue. We take the first one on target, which means we only have two other potential targets left. So there's also another thing we need to check. Uh, we need to make sure that we don't try to attack something that isn't alive right now. And I can't actually remember if we already made sure that our monsters could die or not. Speed path awake is active. Okay, so we can check if it's active. Um, I guess we will have to do this um, later when we actually start uh, reducing the health in the monsters, then it will be better to, to do this. So, never mind, we will check if it's alive later uh, when we have added that. So, we will have to go to our update, and in here we have to call the attack function. And remember, right now it's not an attack function yet, but it will be turned into an attack function, so we will add more stuff to it here, so that it will actually make, make us able to attack the monsters. So, if we go back and stop and run it again, and then we try to set a, a tower here, and then I just need to let this wave change, null, blue monster is on target, and we are now right now we are trying to attack it and everything, and then it gets out of range, and it's not on target anymore. Okay, so next time we start a wave, two monsters will spawn, and it should take the first monster on target and keep that monster on target until it's out of the range here and then switch to the other one when it's out of the range. Let's see. So the green monster is on target now and it's still on target the green monster because we're attacking that and then it exits and then we switch to the blue monster now as you can see and then it stopped. So now we have the correct target functionality so that we can attack the first target that enters 
uh, this area here and then we switch to the next one afterwards. So basically that's what we needed to do in this video um, because it's going to take a lot of things to make this attack function work. So I'm, I'm going to split it up in more videos to make it easier for us to not not to have a video that's one hour long for example so i just split it up in, in more videos so thank you very much for watching um and don't forget to like my facebook page uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, follow me on twitter also don't forget that inscope studios is community founded and all your support is very very important to me um, as you can see i can create different sprites and everything for your support um, and it will also make it easier for me to create lots of different tutorials if you support me. So you can support me in different ways. You can do it on Patreon. If you do it on Patreon, you can get every single project that I've ever created. So thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. Um, also remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page so all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways, you can go to the Patreon page and if you choose to support me there then you'll be able to download every single project that I've ever created um, and you will also be able to get all assets and everything used in all my tutorials. You can also support me by getting one of my tutorials as a standalone product so you'll be able to get all uh, code and all assets and everything for one specific product. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.